Hi YouTubers, here's another video by me on the subject of live streaming. And this will be a quite short video, a maximum of 10 minutes I'm guessing. And this video may be interesting to those out there who don't really understand Linux or don't want to get into Linux and uh, just use Windows and want to start a live stream server from their Windows computer. Now this package that I created today that I placed on the GitHub repository will actually allow you to do so and within 10 minutes it can get you going and I'm going to show you now how to do this. Of course I'll include the links in the description below. Uh, this will be the page that I'll be referring you to and just go to releases, download the latest release file, in this case a working release file version 2.0, save it, download it, save it and um, Unzip it anywhere you want. Uh, in my case, in this case, I'm going to be creating a new folder on my C drive. I'm going to call it uh, Livestream. And I'm going to unzip all the files in the zip file. There. Now, since you just downloaded a zip file that contains ex executables, Windows will block these, like this one, for example. Uh, as you can see, it's blocked now by Windows. You can easily remedy this by opening PowerShell as an administrator so like this um, yes I'll allow it and enter a line that is included in the readme namely this one just copy it paste it in there and now this file is unblocked that's all you have to do to get your live streaming server started because if we double click this one uh, it looks as if nothing's happening but in the background now you have two nginx processors running you can check it if you're in your task manager uh, there they go so that means live streaming is now enabled I'll do a quick test before to see if oops my bad local this is the web page that is shown by Nginx. These two links I included. Uh, they're really easy to test out if HLS and Dash will be working once we're live streaming because we're not live streaming yet. So uh, we should do that first. Uh, so let's grab my OBS here and go to settings and then the stream output and change this to localhost dash live and the live stream key should be stream. Once you got that, you can start streaming. And now you're streaming to your local host and you may wonder what use is that, but uh, actually now you're not only, only streaming, but you also get the, the correct proper video sliced files for streaming HLS and Dash. And you can use those to upload to any, uh, any player on the internet, or maybe you have a WordPress site, you can feed these files to it for um, compatible live streaming for all platforms. Let's see actually if it's running. The, the correct yeah, there you go. proper that's HLS and feed these files to it this is dash or you um, can see they both running you may want to also have a look at the statistics file at this address and there you can see that I have actually more than one stream at the moment why is this because I included in the config file and I'll show you really quick uh, whoops wrong folder I included in the config file that the incoming streams gets pushed to HLS and Dash and it is done by these two lines over here. Um, I also wanted to go into this, these lines which allow variable bitrate streaming but I just ran into some weird issue that I can't get FFmpeg running on a Windows machine uh, even though I added it to the path and all that but uh, for some reason it doesn't want to want to understand or something but uh, so I'm going to leave that out in this video. Maybe I'll go into that in a new video uh, that will be all about variable bitrate streaming. But for now, maybe you can use these lines as an example. Maybe fool around with them, mess around with them. Maybe you can get it working. If you do, let me know. Uh, tell me what I did wrong. <laughs> uh, for the rest, uh, you see in the configuration file here some lines like these with arrows. I included those on a per with, a, with a special purpose. And uh, yeah, let me first explain because what we did here is I included everything on the C drive uh, in this folder live stream that you were just witness of uh, <coughs> and if you go to the temp folder and you open the TMP dash and stream 
there you can see all these sliced video files. They constantly get created by Nginx. And these are actually the files that are shown to you if you watch the stream through HLS or Dash. And I'm just quickly going to remove them because uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the temp folder. But first, let me tell you why. Um, if you decide to store these files on your C drive, and your C drive is also the, the drive that contains your Windows, many people have an SSD drive for this, then it's not actually a good idea to store them on the C drive because of the many read and writes. I.O. operations. Uh, it's a better idea to use a cheap pen drive or USB stick from maybe two gigs or four gigs, whatever you have laying around, and store the temp files on there. And I'm going to explain now how to do this in this setup. And you should also, actually, if you want to spare your C drive, because it will drastically reduce the lifetime of your C drive if you decide to use your C drive for storing these temporary files. So what we're going to do is copy the C temp folder and I already inserted a 2 gigs pen drive. We're just going to paste it to there. And then we need to open the configuration file, which is in the folder config, and change a couple of lines. And this is where these lines that I added come in handy, because they point out exactly what you have to change. This is now set to temp, temp HLS, which is a subfolder of your uh, nginx.exe, but since we, we placed them somewhere else, we need to edit it here also. Whoops. In my case, I copied it to the F drive. So I just add, I just add this. And there's a couple of more locations that I have to do this. Over here and over here, and I believe that's it. There are four or five, four. Let's quickly go through it, just to double check. Yeah, okay, so let's save that. Now we changed something in the configuration file, so what we need to do now, very important, is use this little file to stop Nginx running in the background. Maybe check to see if it closes the processes to be certain. Yep, it does, and start it up again. Uh, you have to do that every time you change something in the configuration file to make it become active. Um, also a little tip, if you do change something in the configuration file, always use this testconfig.batch file uh, because it will show you if your configuration is okay or not, and if it's not, then it will point out what you have to change to get it to work again. So now that it's running again, um, I should be able to start streaming again. Uh, did I double click it already? Uh, Yeah, I did. So if I start streaming now, you will see that these temporary files will not be created in these folders anymore, but over here. So if you love your hard drive, if you love your C drive and you like your Windows, <laughs> do this also. Uh, so there's a little bit you have to change if you uh, want to build a ultimate setup. Um, but like I told you, it does work out of the box. So if you don't really care about those reads writes, if you only stream now and then or incidentally, inc incidentally, yeah, incidentally, then it's okay. But if you want to use, for example, a security cam, cam and do it 24 hours a day, I really strongly advise you to use a uh, external drive for that. Um, yeah, that was it. Uh, again, I hope you like this video. If you do, please thumbs up and all that. And uh, subscribe also. Very important. Subscribe because I'm going to release more videos. Like I just said, um, uh, the next one will be about variable bitrate streaming. And how to set this up properly. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Hope to see you guys soon again. All right. Thanks for watching. And uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.